Hey folks, today I'm playing a bird song by Daniel Linson, as you can see from this lovely title screen. Um, it's a, a free game, build branches to build nests. It's a free game that you can find on the uh, publishing the uh, itch.io, which I'll just call itch from now on. Um, it's a, a free game that you can find off of that publishing platform and oh, can't jump high enough there yet um, <clears throat> Daniel Linson's done some other stuff uh, that's been very interesting um, roguelite uh, similar uh, like uh, game Game Boy-esque um, color palette uh, feel it's, it's got a close to the same feel uh, this one uh, I like and I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some of the material issues but uh, this one's a little bit more of just a you know clearly a platformer um, and I like this game I'm not going there yet um, I like this game because of this fisheye lens, uh, because of what it does to kind of reveal the the whole game space to you um, in one go. Uh, you see the you know the kind of the full materials of the game space before you. Uh, I don't have enough branches yet. One of the things that really bothers me a lot about a lot of uh, gaming criticism and uh, I mean really for that matter a lot of games themselves uh, is the relative lack of attention given to things like um, the materialness of games. Oh, so see I probably should have saved that twig for there. Um, and so I, uh, I've actually had a lot of fun, uh, um, recently looking at, uh, oh, geez, looking at, uh, book history and, um, early, early English print history. Uh, I know a lot of you are like, that does not sound like fun at all. Uh, but it's been... <laughs> It, it's been a lot of fun uh, to take a look at some of this stuff that uh, oh shoot shows off more uh, in this in this in the field of study. Uh, it used to be a lot about you know the author. We think about the author and the uh, text produced by the author and all of these uh, concerns and the material concerns with the publication uh, with the uh, you know the the book item itself uh, a lot of these are too material they're too uh, kind of vulgar to really you know be warranting the, the study if you're gonna study something like Shakespeare you know Shakespeare's a Shakespeare's a great man and oh crap uh, his a lot of his publishers were pirates, and they you know they stole copy, and that's why we have good cordos, bad cordos, these kinds of narratives. Um, when you, you know, in all reality, publishers did what publishers were going to do, and that was try to make money, uh, try to work through whatever holdings they had within the. Uh, English stationers company at the time uh, to you know make make cash uh, <laughs> keep their businesses running um, what we see in a lot of contemporary book history is actually a switch towards uh, less less looking at oh these great authors who you know the this is the this is the story of the publishers who robbed them of their vision um, you know, who replaced their versions with these gross, disgusting versions, uh, and 
the job of any real historian or you know real uh, scholar would then be to go in and fix all of the problems that the publisher might have put on here and at this point you're probably listening like you've been babbling on about Elizabethan publishing practices for too long get to the point this is a thing about video games uh, the point of all of this is that um, what's what's changed now is uh, an attention to the publishers not as you know these gross disgusting beings who came in and corrupted the greatness of Shakespeare uh, but instead just looking very plainly at you know jeez oh, looking very plainly at uh, there were a lot of material concerns that went into publishing Shakespeare and in reality a lot of what we attribute to the greatness of Shakespeare within that reading or the greatness of any of these well that was just lovely the greatness of any of these uh, Elizabethan uh, writers or you know, renaissance writers in general um, this has to do more so with the publishers with how the publisher produced that text um, with then how it got read all of these things link back to the people who had a hand in the material production of not just the text um, it's not necessarily always appropriate to think of everything as a text but instead it may be more useful to think of things in terms of documents, in terms of books. Um, and so the text, the text changes. The text is uh, a fluid object. Uh, the document, you know, we can actually go pick up. We can actually take a look at. We can actually make stronger conjectures over what the document may hold in terms of, uh, you know, meaning making and a lot of these kinds of issues. It, it takes a little bit of interpre interpretiveness out of the equation, but not so much where we end up feeling like we're not, you know, we're not having any interpretation at all anymore. Um, there's certainly still room for interpretation uh, It's just, you know, how much room, <laughs> how much room do you want to give that when you could realistically say the author is one of many people who make meaning, uh, all the other people who add some kind of uh, material production to the cultural product, uh, they're meaning makers as well. You know, why don't we talk about them? So why am I talking about that with this game? Well, because this game is, uh, I found it off of itch. Um, it's a basic little platformer. It's got some wonderful uh, points to it. I really like the, the art style, the feel, the music, uh, adds a lot atmospherically. Um, But you know, I would end up feeling significantly different about this game if I had found it on Steam, where, uh, you know, I'm not really gonna find something like this for free on Steam, because I'm not really gonna find anything for free on Steam. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the developer in that case is providing a layer of meaning well now where that developer decides and obviously in this case you know we're not looking at uh, we're not looking at a publisher in terms of a, a big publishing house this isn't Activision this isn't uh, any of those things but the developer who then acts as the publisher you know the choice to put it up for free on a service like itch well I mean that starts to starts to put some layers on top of this experience um, oh this is bad yep <laughs> uh, I need more branches <laughs> Oof. Um, I mean, 
come back and do this later. Um, so it's just one of those things to consider when you play these kinds of games, you know, to talk about where was it published, who published it, uh, what were the systems that set up that, and how that affects a reading of a game. And ultimately, you know, then when we talk about reading, it seems like, oh, we have to switch into this uh, entirely interpretive mode. You know, the reading is like the reading of a literary text. Um, it's dependent upon all these different things that we remember from, you know, our English classes or whatever. Uh, it's not... Um, oh, jeez. It's not... Uh, It's not necessarily a, a material concern. Reading itself becomes less of a material concern. And I think this is a wrong way to look at this. Um, and it's wrong and it's detrimental. Uh, you can look at things that who, who are the readers in these games. And I'm using reader when you could use you know, player or anything like that. Um, who are the players of these games? Well. You know, you can take a look at who is talking about this, who has downloaded this game. Um, what's the uh, what's the crowd like? Who's doing that? On top of that, how are they playing that? How are they playing this? Uh, the reading is actually changing for me for this game quite significantly uh, because I'm playing it on a Xbox controller right now. It's actually it's not even an Xbox controller. It's a uh, knockoff control Xbox controller uh, so that's actually changing the you want to talk about the materiality then of the reader you know that one step further that's changing the experience for me because I'm not controlling this off of a keyboard uh, you know my hands are not actually attached to the machine that is producing the visuals my hands are attached to you know kind of like a addendum to the machine, a, a, a additional piece that is kind of, has this, you know, umbilical cord attached to it. Uh, but I'm not having an immediate connection visually. That builds a, that builds a layer on top and, you know, say, oh, well, that layer's, that layer's so small, it's, uh, it's so kind of ephemeral, it doesn't really make a big impact on the play but you know a lot of these small things or things that get coded as small a lot of things that get coded as uh, small end up being very material um, they end up being very tied to a player's body a, a person's body uh, it gets coded as small because bodies get written off in culture pretty much all the time uh, we prefer, especially with text and cultural production, we prefer the mind, we prefer the issue of the mind, uh, when realistically we don't wrap the fact that the brain is a part of the body. All of these things are bodily functions. Um, so the, ma the material, and I think this is one of the things that you see a lot of uh, various spaces um, that might intersexualize, intersectionalize in a... Um, critique, a lot of these spaces are really important. Uh, disability studies talks a lot about bodies in particular. Uh, trauma theory will talk about bodies in particular. Uh, all of these different sites like to talk about this, and part of the reason is because it's important to establish that. Uh, it's important to talk about the materiality of these things as a potential critique on Meaning Maker because the author is insufficient. It doesn't drive the only point. There's a sociological model to this. It's a, a little bit of the Vien uh, Velasanov process. There's a model to this that drives meaning within each society, and a big part of that is material, and we don't talk about that. Uh, so I just wanted to show this game off and talk about that a little bit. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it, and um, yeah, have a good one.